Do you ever feel like time flies when you're having fun or dragging when you're bored? Well, two new studies have found that our heartbeat contributes to those feelings. Experiments reported in Current Biology discovered that our perception of time passage expands and contracts with each heartbeat. I am joined now by one of the lead authors of that study, Irina Arslanova. Irina, very good to have you with us. Can you explain to us how this happens and works with the heart? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm very thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for taking interest in the work. So I think before I go into the details of the actual link between the heart and the brain, I think it's useful to just give a very brief context to this topic and why I think a lot of people find this fascinating. So I think, you know, when you think about time, you usually think about it in terms of a clock where each tick covers a identical duration. But as you just noted, this is not actually how we experience time in our daily life. So some moments seem to be passing quicker than others. Um, so for example, you know, time feels different depending on whether I am writing an exam under time pressure or whether I'm waiting for the exam results. So there's all these time distortions. In the first case, the time could be like, Path like this, any other case, it cannot possibly go any slower. Now, the reason why these distortions happen is because the brain does not process time as a clock. It does not accumulate some external ticks in the world um, of identical duration. And instead, more useful way of thinking about time is in terms of a hourglass. So what this means is that the brain is a dynamical system. So it is constant neural activity that is constantly changing. So imagine you see something, you know, there's a signal that comes in from your eyes and it travels all across the brain. The one neuron will activate the other neuron and create this huge network of neural neural networks. So in other words, there is a constant change in neural dynamics happening in your brain, just like in an hourglass there's a constant change happening as the sand moves. So now the tricky thing is that unlike the hourglass, the change that happens in the brain is not constant. It is a variable. Some stimuli can cause a bigger change than other stimuli. So now the brain derives time as an hourglass from the change in dynamical activity of the brain. So this is not my theory. This is a kind of a theory that we have about how time can be derived from the brain. What these theories have overlooked is that the brain is a part of a much bigger dynamical system that is the body. So there is all these signals in their body that are also constantly changing. And now this is where we can talk about the heart. So why heart is an interesting thing. Why are we looking at the heart? So this is a constant signal that occurs within the body, but it is variable. So there's a variable duration between the beats and sometimes heart accelerates and sometimes it decelerates. And in this study, what we basically show is that the very low level changes in the state of the heart can actually influence how duration is experienced. So when the heart contracts and we see something, the experience duration of that stimuli will also be contracted. However, when the heart relaxes and we see something and we present participants with the stimuli at that time, the experience duration is, expand is expanded. So in other words, the momentary state of the heart changed how duration was experienced. And this basically means, and this is the kind of the big point of the study, is that this means that the brain must take into account the changing nature of the signals that arise from the body when it is the right time. So imagine my situation right now. I am in a state of heightened anxiety. My time is very different from your time, probably. My heart is pounding because I'm not usually used to talking about my study on the news, so my heart is pounding. My time is currently going really, really fast. It's going so fast that it's really hard for me to even keep track of my thoughts. And one thing, you know, this is happening because my brain is currently working differently from yours. 
So according to the study, one thing that I could do is to take a really deep breath and try to actually um, slow down my heart and in that way, slow down my time. So, so that's I'm, the kind of a bigger idea of the study. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I didn't want to interrupt you. Time was passing at the perfect rate for me as you explained that. But we are indeed about to be out of time. So, I mean, it just tells quickly how this these findings might be important in the way we experience time or regulate our experience with it with respect to our hearts. So I think the kind of the main point of this is that if time is something that is influenced by our hearts, then, you know, it's very hard to change kind of neural activity, but it's actually quite easy to change our hearts. So, and it's something that people in mindfulness and meditation do a lot. So they change their breathing patterns. They try to change, kind of slow down their heart rate. And indeed, they do see these changes in how they experience time. So that's the kind of the, the, the easiest practical implication that you could take out of um, this study. <laughs> and delivered perfectly on time. I, uh, Irina Aslanova, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.